Member of Eight Days of Hope Ministry just returned from a relief mission where he says 1,900 volunteers from 44 states and five countries came to help. And he says more is on the way. We're not ready to officially announce yet. And when we do, we'll do it here on NAFR. <laughs> Stay tuned. Strong earnings report has Wall Street in a good mood. The Dow gaining 160 points today. The Nasdaq rose 72 and the S&P 500 was up 17. More news online at onenewsnow.com. For American Family News, I'm Steve Jordahl. It's National Collection Week for Operation Christmas Child. AFA Journal editor Randall Murphy was in Ecuador to see children receive shoebox gifts. It is a remarkable experience just to watch their eyes as they pulled out a little toy or a tablet or some crayons. Children also hear the gospel. Through shoebox gifts, Operation Christmas Child provides the opportunity for children to be discipled. Learn more at SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC. Darkness is not an affirmative force. It simply reoccupies the space vacated by the light. This is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio and Urban Family Talk. It should be uncomfortable for a believer to live as a hypocrite. Delivering people out of the bondage of mainstream media and the philosophies of this world. God has called you and me to be his ambassadors. Even in this dark moment, let's not miss our moment. And now, the Hamilton Corner. Good evening. Welcome to the Hamilton Corner here on American Family Radio and Urban Family Talk. I'm your host, Abraham Hamilton III. I'm down one J, but I have another J here in studio with me. Uh, Jeff has already started his Thanksgiving break. And I'm not mad at you, Jeff. Enjoy yourself, my man. But we're here. We're here looking forward to this program, looking forward to this week. Uh, looking forward to all the things um, that God has for us unfolding them moment by moment, piece by piece, individually in our, in our own lives, in our, the lives of our family, in the lives of our, our particular local assemblies where we worship, <clears throat> in our city, state, country, and most significantly, I would say, within the family of God. Well, I'm going to begin the program today in Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 1 through 10 and make some comments um, about these scriptures, um, because I believe, as always, you know, the Bible tells us that the Lord has given us in his word all things that pertain to life and godliness, which I have found to be absolutely true. Um, but just to turn to the, the word of God to navigate the issues that we're facing, I'm sure many of you, if, if not, I'll update you, but I'm sure uh, the news concerning Charlie Rose and his now termination from CBS in the wake of him admitting to sexual misconduct, um, eight different women accused him, <laughs> um, and he admitted to some of it. He said not all of it is true, but I'm gonna get, get I'm gonna get into that story. Uh, but I just want to uh, point out some things from God's word and, and use that as the baseline from which we navigate these issues that are happening in the national uh, in the national spotlight that many people are talking about all around the country. Uh, I think it's we do ourselves a disservice if we discuss these things exclusively as political issues or national news items uh, without turning to the word of God to see what the Lord's word would have to say about these things. So um, to do that, we're going to start in Galatians chapter six. And I feel like I have to sneeze. That's why I keep pausing because <laughs> I don't want to be in mid sentence and then have to sneeze. All right. But here we go. Galatians six, starting verse one it says, brothers. Again, this is, let me say this at the beginning, because this is important to, to discuss. <clears throat> Galatians is the epistle written by the Apostle Paul uh, that was written to the saints of God at Galatia. And this is Apostle Paul's normal tendency in writing his epistles to the various churches, that he would go through a, a pretty extensive prologue where he would you know, talk about uh, the, the great, I commend you for this, I commend you for that before he would go into his full discourse that we wanted to discuss. But the lone exception to that is the epistle to the Galatians. And why is that? In Paul's epistle to the Galatians, he, he kind of dispenses with his prologue and immediately goes into who has bewitched you, O foolish Galatians. Having begun in the spirit of God, why would you then want to revert back 
to the flesh. Because what happened is after Paul had established the church at Galatia, there were some Judaizers who came to the area after Paul, attempting to convince the Gentile believers there in order for them to be full Christians, in order to be full followers of the way, that they had to convert. They probably wouldn't argue full conversion to Judaism, but they at a minimum were advocating for many, the men to be circumcised and those physical uh, actions in their body to observe certain things in order to demonstrate their following. When Paul was saying, listen, you started this in the spirit of God. You started this following the way of Jesus Christ, receiving salvation by grace through faith. Why would you then want to go and try to add something on top of that? Well, this is in the middle of that entire epistle. And should I say not the middle? This is at the latter part of this epistle where we pick up in Galatians chapter 6. So I'll start reading now with that background in mind. Here we go. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, the one who sows to his own flesh, will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. If we do not give up, the King James says, faint not. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Praise God for his word. Well, here we go. Right off the bat. <clears throat> Pray, Lord, have mercy. When it says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression or the King James says, if anyone is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Now, there's some who have attempted to use this scripture to argue uh, for some type of hierarchies within the family of God when that is not the case. This is not an advocacy for some, for some sort of um, ecclesiastical elitism, okay? It's simply saying those who are uh, mature, those who are wiser, those who have uh, been steeped, you know, I've used, I like to drink tea, like a tea bag, who've been steeped and the faith are the ones who are supposed to lead out in restoring those who are caught up in a fault. But then Paul adds into this, this discussion, keeping watch on yourselves. You see, y'all hear me say all the time, never get too big for your britches. Never get into the place where you feel or you think, not feel, but you think that you may be above reproach yourself, but you, you restore a brother from the perspective, I would suggest, and Paul has said this in other places, in full view of the way ha that God has delivered you. And that will provoke a gentleness in you to go and restore your brother. And Paul's admonition of keeping watch on yourself, lest you to be tempted, uh, builds on that same concept. In verse 2, then he goes and says, and bear one another's burdens. I've said all the time, this thing called Christianity was never meant to be lived out in isolation. God has established Christianity to be lived out in communities. Not saying that there won't be times where you may be separate. You know, John on the Isle of Patmos still had a responsibility and a requirement to walk upright before the Lord. But the Lord's desire for his body is that we live in community. This is why I'm very, I'm not knocking anything. I love technology. But I'm, I'm very um, intentional about communicating to people that we have to be careful. Watching a sermon online is not the same as being in community with the believers. See, we have reduced body life, life in the body of Christ, to merely attending worship services. Attending worship services is a part of body life, but it is not the sum total of body life. When you read instructions like this, from the Apostle Paul through the Apostle Paul from the Lord is saying that we are to bear one another's burdens. This is something that cannot be done in isolation. 
In order to bear one another's burdens, we have to hug some necks. We have to break some bread together. We have to spend some time together. But the enemy has been very slick in allowing us to to be somewhat puffed up in pride by being able to say, well, we have multiple campuses. And we have people who can kind of play hopscotch around multiple campuses, which I'm looking. I kind of haven't found any biblical support for that, but that's a whole other story. Uh, But hopscotching around, and oftentimes we use the, the, the largesse of the technological advantages and the largesse of the multiple campuses and the modern uh, approach to church to allow us to escape from real fellowship. What often happens when that occurs is that we miss out on a sanctifying component of body life that God has put there for us. That sanctifying component is not merely you um, coming groveling to, to confess to somebody else, oh, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that, but it's also you and I being made available for our brothers and sisters to be able to bear with one another as we navigate life. Because what should occur as we bear with one another, if we happen to be the spiritual ones, the mature ones in, an, in a situation where we're bearing with one another, we should do so in full view of the potential for our very own failures. We should do so in full view of the reality that, listen, you, you, you weren't put in the microwave and came out on 350 saying, mm, well done, saint. No, the Lord has worked with us through some processes. One of the greatest deficiencies in church life now is that as, for example, when Apostle, when, when, when Apostle Paul writes in Titus that the younger women, uh, that the older women in the faith are able to pour into and minister to the younger women, I, I hear cr- quite repeatedly uh, from a lot of younger women, where are the older women? Where are those who I can confide in, those who I can walk with, those who I can be poured into by? Not merely the sermons on Sundays, not the weekend sermons, but that we can do life with. I hear from the younger men, man, many of them are coming from broken homes where they've never had a father. So they have no concept of what Christian manhood, let alone manhood alone, looks like. And so we have these things that have kind of slyly slipped in to our modern understanding of church life that has separated us to such a degree, not merely in physical proximity, but separated us in relationship where we don't really have body life. We don't really have families in local assemblies. What we have is people who gather together for an event and then we go back home and retreat to our separate corners of the world. In order to do church biblically, there has to be this bearing with one another component, this living the Christian life in community. Where we get to the place where we develop relationship, where we get beyond the superfluous uh, small talk and where we get to the, the reality of relationship with one another. But let me keep going. It's interesting that I said before that in the same epistle where Paul encourages the Galatians to not be given over to following the Mosaic law, he then says, bearing, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is he referring to? He's referring to Paul's summary in Matthew chapter 22 of the entirety of the law and the prophets. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus said, and so fulfill the entirety of the law. The fulfilling of the law of Christ in this scenario is not in order to uh, earn salvation. This is a following because of what has been purchased for us already. Let me keep going because I see the time is running. Man, Jason, you might even tell me I was taking too long. Let me keep going. Verse 3, 4, if anyone thinks he's something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work and let this, and then his reason to, be bo- to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let's drop down to verse 8 because this is really where I want to to land to set the framework for the show today. There's that sneeze. All right, got it out. All right, most of the time it comes twice, so I probably have another one coming in a little bit. Here we go. Verse 8. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. Will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Here's where I want to go with today's program. We're seeing these stories come out about sexual harassment, sexual assault. And this will be a show, if you have some young ears around, you may want to, um, you know, pause it, go to the podcast later. I I just would not want this show to traverse any lines of formative living for your own children that you have. Uh, So I want to put this disclaimer out there because I'm going to talk about uh, what I believe is a modern day golden calf in America, which is sex. All right. We see these things happening 
over and over, we see this increased incident of, you know, female teachers having sexual relationships with their young male students. We see this happening day in, day out, day in, day out. We see all of these allegations, the, the absolute smut and depravity that is Hollywood is being exposed for all of us to see. And my response, which I believe is the same response that the Lord would have, is why, why are we going to act brand new? Why, why should we be surprised? The Bible says if you sow to, sow to the flesh, you'll reap to that same flesh. To the same flesh, or should I say from that same flesh, you'll reap corruption. I would suggest to you what we're seeing play out on the national stage is the revelation of the corruption that is in the United States of America. We have elevated sex to such a degree where you cannot escape the pornographic nature of society unless you choose to turn certain aspects of it off. It fills, fills our music, it fills our movies, it fills commercials, it saturates everything around us. Pornography generates far more money than lots of other industries, but yet we're going to be surprised when the sexual harassment hits the fan like it has. Faith in the midst of a storm. Hi, I'm Matt Staver with Freedom's Call. One of the foundational aspects of Christianity and Judeo-Christianity is trusting God. Many things flow out of this trust. The main challenge to trust is that our faith must overcome sometimes what we see. Believing what we can see is not trust, it's logic. In contrast, when our surroundings tell us one thing, trust is choosing to believe something greater and an eternal truth. In these days, when Christians and people of faith are increasingly punished for standing for their faith, it is critical that we remember this truth. How much more we must stand in confidence of God's unchanging character and His love for us when the storms increase. God is worthy of our trust today, tomorrow, and forever. Ask God what you should do to build a deeper trust in Him. Then step out in faith. He will never let you down. Pray how God might strengthen your faith and how you might be bold to act on it. Visit Liberty Council's website at lc.org. That's lc.org. A Moment of Truth with Gary Bryden, Executive Director of the Association of Independent Methodists. Recalling the intent of the pilgrims who came to this country in the 17th century, John Adams, President of the United States after George Washington, wrote, Suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book, and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts. Every member would be obliged in conscience to temperance, frugality, and industry, to justice, kindness, and charity towards his fellow men, and to piety, love, and reverence toward Almighty God. The pilgrims, our early presidents, and authors of our Constitution were men of faith, and expected faith to be reflected in society and in our country. The Association of Independent Methodists, like-minded congregations doing together what can't be done separately. Visit aim2020.com. Hello, everyone. This is Tim Wildman, president of American Family Association and American Family Radio. This is your early announcement about the 2018 tours to Williamsburg, Jamestown, and Yorktown as well as Washington, D.C. and Mount Vernon. We call these Spiritual Heritage Tours. There'll be one in June and one in September. For all the information about these tours, go to our website, www.spiritualheritagetours.com. Very simply, spiritualheritagetours.com. The birth of Jesus is central to Christmas. In fact, he is why the holiday is called Christmas. Please help the American Family Association keep Christ in Christmas by ordering and distributing our Keep Christ in Christmas wristbands. Share them with friends, family, even total strangers. The AFA Keep Christ in Christmas wristband is a fun, inexpensive way to remind folks of the true reason for this sacred season. You can order AFA Keep Christ in Christmas wristbands in sets of 10 at afa.net. Shining light into the darkness. This is the Hamilton Corner on American Family Radio and Urban Family Talk. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner here on American Family Radio and Urban Family Talk. Abraham Hamilton III here. The point I was making before the break is Galatians 6, 8. It says, for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. The, the Greek word for corruption there literally is destruction, perishing, and it has the, 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 the connotation of an increasing souring moral decay so it is it is the type of you know you open a bottle of spoiled milk 
smell, that initial presentation of that spoiled milk is nothing but the tip of the iceberg. But that decay of that spoiling will continue and continue and continue. And what I was getting at is what I believe the Lord is doing in our country right at this moment. He's, he, he's doing two things. One, I think there have been lots of people in the country that have been praying for our nation to repent. And so some of the things that have been hidden and concealed for, for times past are being exposed and revealed. But then I also believe the other thing that the Lord is doing is revealing to us the depths of the depravity, the depths of it. And I'm saying, what did we expect? What did we expect? We, many of the things, <clears throat> let me say this properly, many of the things that are literally destroying our nation from the inside out. I would suggest one of the chiefs, if not the chief among them, is the refusal to adhere to God's standards for human sexuality. You think about some of the biggest issues of the day that are being discussed in our culture, abortion, homosexuality, bisexuality, <laughs> transgenderism, Redefine, redefining marriage, what do all of these things have in common? Sex outside of God's parameters. Now, <clears throat> we have people who advocate for all sorts of perversion. And they say those perversions are cool as long as those perversions are between consenting adults. Yet, we are surprised when we see people who pursue these perversions and consent is kind of not so clear you know I read a piece by a woman who purported to be a, a Christian and in the middle of you know this me too moment in our culture the revelations of uh, you know I saw a headline Charlie Rose and Charlie fell you know uh, she found a way to blame Mike Pence saying that ba her basic argument was Mike Pence's approach to protecting himself and to protecting those around him from the type of salacious scandal that we see percolating our, in our culture. He's saying Mike Pence and people who think like Mike Pence are to blame for these archaic notions of m m maleness and femaleness. And I'm saying, oh, what planet are you talking about? Because you see, these are people that are attempting to navigate human failings while wanting to simultaneously ignore the reality of human frailty or dare I say human depravity. And see, because, as the scripture says, when you sow to the flesh from that very own, from that same source, we, you'll reap not just a bad, not some bad PR. You, you'll reap not just losing a job. You'll reap corruption. 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 You're seeing that this thing crosses all socioeconomic lines, crosses all types of boundaries and lines, and it is, it is the product of a culture that has said, ah, move over, Jesus, move over, Yeshua HaMashiach, move over, Yahweh of the Bible, and make room. We want to put the lust of the flesh right on the same pole. Think, think about the films that garner Oscar buzz. They all, are, they all include crossing further boundaries of depravity. You know, I don't even know the name of it. I read something yesterday. There's a new movie coming out that in the middle of this, this moment where Hollywood is being exposed for the cesspool that it is, there's a movie coming out. I forgot the name of it. I'm sorry, y'all. But where it's celebrating a, a, a sexual relationship between a 25-year-old man and a 17-year-old boy. Yep. Yep, sure is. I wish. I'm going to, when we go through the break, I'm going to get the name of that movie. And it's just, I'm saying, it's, it should be shocking but it's not, because you know why? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. When you defy, Romans 1 says it clearly, when you defy the knowledge of God, you have no choice but result in the futility of <coughs> your own mind. So, with that, let's talk about this. <laughs> Charlie Rose, well-known uh, news commentator, uh, well-known interviewer of heads of state, celebrities, you know it, 
uh, primary feature and co-host of the CBS Morning Show. Um, <laughs> he was fired today by CBS because of the allegations. And you can say allegations, but he admitted to some of them. The allegations of eight women who, who said Charlie Rose is guilty of sexual misconduct. I'll start with the termination part first, and then no, I'll start with the allegations first. And I'm not going to go into all of the details of all the allegations. But there were eight women. Three of them went on the record with their allegations. Five of them uh, requested to remain anonymous out of fear of retribution. Charlie Rose was accused by eight women of making unwanted sexual advances toward them and admitted to some of the misconduct in a statement. The Rose's alleged misconduct includes making lewd phone calls, walking around naked in front of these women, groping women's, uh, I'll just say their areas where they should not be groped. Y'all get what I'm saying. Charlie Rose's accusers, get this, were employees or those who aspired to work for Rose at the Charlie Rose Show on PBS from the late 1990s to as recently as 2011. Now, Charlie Rose is a 75-year-old man. These allegations include him and things that have occurred just six years ago, maybe seven going to 2018. Again, Charlie Rose is a 75-year-old man, so he's talking about a man in his upper 60s with these same types of shenanigans. Rose's accusers were between the ages of 21 and 37 years old at the time of the alleged encounters. And the, the stories indicate that there were striking commonalities in the accounts of the women. His alleged behavior typically included offering jobs to females and then using his power to put them in uncomfortable positions of a sexual nature. He allegedly would offer women a six-figure position that disappeared once they rejected his advance. In a statement, in his statement, Charlie Rose posted a full statement himself on social media. He says, quote, in my 45 years of journalism, I have prided myself on being an advocate for the careers of the women with whom I have worked. Nevertheless, in the past few days, claims have been made about my behavior towards some former female colleagues. It is essential that these women know I hear them and that I deeply apologize for my inappropriate behavior. I am greatly embarrassed. Charlie Rose continued in his statement, quote, I have behaved insensitively at times, and I accept responsibility for that. Though I do not believe that all of these allegations are accurate, I always felt that I was pursuing shared feelings, even though I now realize I was mistaken. He's not alone. We have the representative from Michigan, the longest serving representative in the House of Representatives, a founding member of the Congressional Black Caucus, former marcher in the civil rights movement who was lauded by Martin Luther King Jr. himself, Michigan Representative John Conyers. <laughs> he not only has been accused of sexual harassment and misconduct, but he is one of the individuals who settled a sexual harassment lawsuit for over $27,000. Mm -hmm. There was a young lady who was on the Laura Ingram show this week. Her name was M. Reese Everson, who said she was a, a fellow working for the Congressional Black Caucus, who she was harassed sexually. And when she reported it, she was blackballed, wasn't able to get any more jobs on Capitol Hill. What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that I believe God is exposing the root rot that has taken place in our country. He's exposing the reality that this phenomenon is pervasive all throughout our country. And we have the, 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 the fact that we live in a pornographic society. I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been in conversations with other believers who would tell me things like, Abraham, you know, you're a little too stuffy. You know, you need to let loose have some fun sometimes. And, 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 and you know, who, who really enjoys being that guy all the time? 
But then the one time I had to ask the question, and, and just being honest, not trying to condescend it, but I'm saying, listen, if we can find these things entertaining, what does that say about us? Especially if we're supposed to be those who care about the souls of men, how can we find illicit sexual activity entertaining? How can we laugh at that? And you're like, ha, 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 oh, that's, that's fine. You know, on a break, Jay Tross and I were talking about how many times, you know, we've had to turn to television off, turn movies off, not go to the movies and all these types of things. And what I'm suggesting is that when you sow to the flesh individually, from that flesh will reap corruption. Sow to the flesh as a country, from the flesh will reap corruption. <laughs> I really think this is a sobering moment from our, for our country, and I hope that we, especially the believers in our country, have an ear to hear what's happening have an ear to hear what's happening, and it causes all of us to recalibrate. I'm thinking about the hypocrisy of those celebrities that were a part of, you know, the Women's March, you know, where they, you know, you have Ashley Judd talking about she's a nasty woman and all of these things, when as it turns out, she is in a situation where she felt it, it was okay for her to know Harvey Weinstein is, is a sexual predator, but say nothing about it, yet we want to march on Washington when there are people in your same industry who are being abused by this, abused by people in the industry repeatedly, and you all know this, yet we're all okay with it. And, and there is, yes, the reality that, you know, repro uh, retribution and all these other types of things. But can it also be said that sometimes some of these people, the men, not just the women, the men who are in these industries that know these things happen, but, you know, they get to work with the mogul Harvey Weinstein. So, you know, you know, what's what's a few abused women between friends? You know, this is this is smut, guys. This is smut. But you had people all too willing to go along with it. Why? Because they felt like it was for whatever words they might not articulate it this way. But the bottom line, the only thing you can go to is that the importance of revealing the, the predatory behavior of Harvey Weinstein weren't as important as advancing their careers. And I'm not talking about the victims. I'm talking about the people who empower, empowered the victimization by remaining silent for all of these years, 30 years. Harvey Weinstein, Louis C.K., you know, Kevin Spacey, Charlie Rose. I mean, the list goes John Conyers. The, the, the names, it just, they continue. And what I'm saying, <laughs> again, is that you can't keep pornographying our culture and expect nothing to happen. We have this modern feminist movement today where you have women who, who, who say that the zenith of their human agency is being able to pursue voracious sexual appetite like men have been able to do for decades. And I'm saying, that's what you want? Uh, that, that's what you're talking about? Truth has fallen in the street. Truth has fallen in the street. And justice has turned back. The question I have for us is how will we respond? How will we respond? The, the scripture in Galatians, they, they say we restore in the spirit of gentleness but keeping watch on ourselves. I know for a fact that there are enough Christians in America, because I'm going to say it this way, the, the Hollywood industry works off supply and demand. If you stop watching it, if I stop watching it, they won't make it. You know how I know? Because they wouldn't be able to make any money off of it. There are enough Christians in our country where we can do more than just say, you know, we, we want to make sure we're living in the country where those who have been victimized feel comfortable re coming forward and having their, their, their abusers exposed. We have the ability, if we'll use it, to say, you know what? We're not going to support any more of these nasty movies. You know what? We're not going to support any more of these nasty television channels. You know what? We're not going to put up with this anymore because we realize that as a culture, we have enabled a lot of this foolishness. And, of course... With Hollywood, I've said it several times, we didn't have to wait to see 
to learn about Harvey Weinstein to know that Hollywood was full of degenerates, full of depraved human beings, because we see what they make. The Bible tells us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. So why would we need to know that? These nasty music videos, these nasty music, you know, you have these artists who come out when they're young, they have squeaky clean images, and what happens? They're not considered real artists until they, they described as becoming edgy. Well, what does becoming edgy mean? They become oversexed. They start dressing scantily, singing the most disgusting lyrics, and then society applauds them by saying, ah, now that's real art. Happening across the board. We're sowing to the flesh, and from the flesh, we are reaping corruption. And God is exposing it for us to see. In my opinion, for two reasons in response to the prayer of the saints so that we can point to people to the why. We see the what, but what is the why? And secondarily, for us to be made aware of what God's. Now these are the revelations that are coming up publicly. But can you imagine how much sexual misconduct God knows about in stomach? It's disgusting. Does the changing of the seasons have you thinking about the future? If you're feeling like you can't contribute as you have in the past, maybe we can offer some help. There are many ways to make an end-of-the-year charitable gift. A cash donation comes with the advantage of a tax deduction. Transferring appreciated stock can allow you to avoid capital gains taxes. You could leave a gift through a will or trust by naming AFA as a beneficiary. And a charitable gift annuity provides a deduction for today as well as guaranteed income for life. Let us show you how to maximize your year-end giving for yourself and for AFA. Visit afafoundation.net or call 800-326-4543, extension 345. If the economy has you worried about what the future may bring, giving through the AFA Foundation could help. Again, that's afafoundation.net or call 800-326-4543, extension 345. Hi everyone, Carl Kirby with Reasons for Hope talking about the giraffe. Did you know that giraffes very rarely lay down? They only sleep about 20 minutes a day at 5 minutes a stretch. They even give birth standing up. Talk about an Iron Man. So why doesn't the giraffe get tired holding their neck up all day long? Because of an amazing design by God. God gave giraffes a tendon that runs from the base of their skull all the way to where their tails begin that holds their neck up, not the muscles. They only use their muscles to pull their heads down, not up. Fact is, when you see a giraffe lift their heads after getting a drink, it almost seems to spring back up, and that's because it is. The tendon is actually popping their heads back up for them. Do your best to imagine that such an amazing design feature happened as a result of genetic mutation. That's less like fact and more like fanciful fantasy. For more information, check us out at rforh.com. Stay bold. Hello Americans, I'm Todd Stearns with news and commentary next. Affirm Films and Sony Pictures Animation present The Star, the fully animated story of the first Christmas told through a whole new set of eyes. Bo the donkey and his stable of animal friends follow the star to become some unlikely heroes. That light, that's the star. This is where it's been leading me. What's his name? His name is Jesus. The Star, now playing. Rated PG, parental guidance suggested. More information is available at thestarmovie.com. Hollywood and the mainstream media continue to be rocked by all sorts of scandals, from sexual assault to pedophilia. You would think by now the newsmakers and the filmmakers would understand what they have wrought on our culture, Fifty Shades of Debauchery. But instead, they seem to be doubling down, producing even more obscenity. The latest, a gay romance art house film, Call Me By Your Name, is the story of a teacher in his mid-twenties who has a sexually charged affair with a 17-year-old boy. Critics have embraced the film. The New York Times calls it intoxicating. Others say it could be the frontrunner for an Oscar. The Times went on to dismiss concerns about the decency of a man-boy love story, the director of the film said it was an artificial topic. What does it say about a nation, ladies and gentlemen, that turns to pedophilia to be entertained? I'm Todd Starnes. 
The Hamilton Quarter podcast and one-minute commentaries are available at AFR.net and UrbanFamilyTalk.com. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio and Urban Family Talk. That's the movie I was talking about. We, we will open the phone lines in this segment. The number, if you want to be, be a part of the program, is 888-589-8840. The number, once again, is 888-589-8840. If you want to discuss anything we've discussed during the program today, is fair game, starting from the scripture in Galatians all the way through Charlie Rising, I mean, Charlie Rose, then he fell, and the movie I'm talking about. I couldn't remember the name, uh, but Todd Starn said it just in that uh, that piece just now. The name of it is Call Me By Your Name. And so <laughs> in this, this Me Too moment where you have uh, this voraciousness of the moral decay being put on uh, full display for the nation to see, <laughs> where Kevin, Kevin Spacey's uh, pederast and pedof- pedophilia uh, inclination is being exposed, Hollywood responds to that. By putting out a movie about a, 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 a homosexual affair between a man and a, and a boy. I'm saying these people are sick. And, and the pundits say, ooh, it's intoxicating. It's, oh, it's, it's I mean, all, all of the things that I'm saying, man, this country, this country is sick. The country is sick. And unless, unless we make a turn. Unless we make a turn, it, 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 it will only, without turning back to the Lord, without repenting, without repentance, it will only get worse. It will only get worse. I want to share this. This may be uh, encouraging for some people. I, you know, um, Matt Drudge tweeted this out today. He's normally pretty accurate on these types of things. Uh, Mark Levin is set for a weekly. This is Matt Drudge's tweet. Mark Levin set for a weekly TV show on Fox News. Levin, who has sold millions of books and hosts a top-rated radio broadcast, was warmly received at the White House last week during meets with Trump Pence. New Fox show will feature legal, political, social commentary. Expect fireworks. Well, when these types of announcements have been made in the past by Matt Drudge, he's been pretty accurate on this type of stuff. So could it be, and, and I don't think it's any rocket science, I think uh, Fox News has recognized many of its former audience <laughs> former audience felt the, the channel was moving away from conservatism, and so they're attempting to regain some of that audience. So they're going to try to bring Mark Levin on. So I just wanted to, to, to share that for those who are interested in that. But I, I think it's, I think it's um, a bit ridiculous, quite frankly, and I think it is naive of our society to believe celebrating the violations of God's standards concerning sexuality will produce an increased morality concerning sexual ethics. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. There, there, was, there, were, there were sexual misconduct allegations in a show, and I, I don't watch these shows, so I only find out about them reading these news stories. There was a show called Transparent, I believe. The whole show is about following uh, somebody that's becoming transgender. And I'm saying... You guys, the whole show was built around define, d- defying God's standards for human sexuality, for the identity of humankind, yet you're surprised when you see violations of human sexuality and moral standards. It, 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 it's, it's an amazing Jedi mind trick that only depraved human beings could do to themselves. But as promised, We'll go to the phone lines. We'll go first to Tennessee, where Patricia is on the line. Patricia, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Abraham. I look, I'm glad to talk to you. Um, I wanted to say it, you were talking about not always wanting to be the stuffy guy and turning off all the shows and the, the dirt. And I wanted to say, you know, I the Bible verse, such as were some of you, mm-hmm. it rings true to me because I used to take in – what they were selling, I would watch, you know, Jagged Edge or any of those psychological thrillers where people are sleeping with each other and mm-hmm. killing each other's mistress and, you know, trying to solve the mystery. But there's always some dirt that's going on that creates 
the scene for the movie. Mm -hmm. And I finally got to the point where I did. I realized um, I've been a Christian, but I got sucked into that very same thing because that's what's out there showing. So that's what I went to go watch. Mm -hmm. But I realized at some point, yeah, it's not fun to watch this anymore. There's something wrong with watching this. And so thank you for fortifying people and and driving this home because I I was telling your um, screener, that, you know, recently I heard coworkers talking about The Wolf of Wall Street. That was mm-hmm. fairly recent, and one of them had gone to see it and said, oh, man, it's pure debauchery. And the other one said, oh, great, we're going to go see it tonight. Mm. And when you hear that, you're like, mm. you know, that it, it has, hasn't hit home for them. It's like <laughs> it's just, you know, if somebody would just keep pounding in, this just something's not right here, you know, it's just – it, it, it's not that hard to turn it off, and I don't watch any more of the shows or anything like that, uh, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, thank you so much, Patricia, for your call and your comments. And, and you know, it, it's true, because, listen, I'm on this program, but I'm a human being, too. I'm a man, and when I'm saying that, you know, I, I get the comments, you know, oh, here comes Abe, you know, oh, here, you know, turn it off, Abe is coming. But, but, I, but I'm saying, it. <laughs> if somebody was handing arsenic to me, would I, would I take it and ingest it? No. But what we're doing, people are hand, people are handing us arsenic, but because they put it chocolate coating, we're saying, oh, yeah, let's have another piece. Boop, pop it and consume it. You know, I'll give you another example. I'll give you two examples. i never forget. I didn't watch it, but I heard about this show that's on television now, Empire, that they had Alicia Keys, who's this Grammy-winning artist, literally celebrating <laughs> she being a heterosexual woman but having a sexual relationship with a homosexual man. And I'm saying, does anybody, is, nobody's aware of the, the numbers of women who are newly contracting incurable sexually transmitted diseases because they're having sex with men who have sex with men? We're going to act like that's not happening at <laughs> epidemic rates in destroying entire communities? But because they put it in some slickly advertised show, we'll watch it. Another show, and listen, I'm not trying to, every, there's liberty, there's, there's freedoms in Christ, of course. But I'm like, come on, man. Some of us wouldn't recognize Satan unless he came home hopping around in a red suit with a pitchfork. I'm like, ah, come here, let me get you. I'm saying, why do we need that when satanic things are happening all around us? There's a show, Scandal. I never watched an episode, but I know the plot line was there's this woman who's supposed to be empowered, and she's a serial adulterer. And I'm saying, how do you how do you care about marriage and want to maintain your marriage when you spend your time being entertained? <laughs> and to add insult to injury, this woman who is the protagonist of the program ends up getting pregnant and has an abortion on television and is happy about the abortion. I'm saying, are we are we alive? Back to the phone lines. I'm sorry. I'm just. So to the flesh, from the flesh, we reap corruption. Louise, to Louisiana we go, where Tim is on the line. Tim, thank you for c- calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. Tim, are you there? Oh, this is Tim. Yeah, okay. Uh, when I have the speaker off, I can barely hear it. Oh, anyway, okay. Go right ahead, Tim. I'll make a uh, – I have to turn off the speaker. Here, here's the thing, and I really appreciate your show, but that aside uh, – we uh, in the last days they're going to call good evil and evil good. Okay, and we get that, and and they pump us full of this this garbage uh, on TV, and we have to either choose not to watch any of this stuff that's fun, action packed stuff, and then they got to cuss and use God's name in vain. Mm-hmm. They first started using it three times a show. Now and now every what a preacher said, a black preacher by the way said, whatever goes in the well comes up in the bucket. And the last mm-hmm. point I want to make is is if we're going to so this kind of garbage into our youth and our people, and we're not going to watch this stuff. And the censors, you know, they, they cut our censors out. Like, it, it, it's you need your censors because look at what we've got now. And we've got uh, – um, and, and, and one more thing. I just I know that you got to get me off quick. <laughs> one more thing. There was a reason why. It wasn't quarantine. God created quarantine. Amen. Put them outside. The people that were lepers. I, I'm not being mean or heartless. Uh, but you know how to cure AIDS? One man with one woman for life, one generation, and AIDS dies. Tim, spot on. Spot on. Tim is absolutely right. He's absolutely right. 
He's absolutely right. Listen, there's a different, let me say it this way. The perception of limitation versus guardrails all depends of your, of your perspective in Christ. To the one who doesn't know the Lord, or dare I say to the talking snake in the garden, the prohibition concerning the tree in the middle of it was a limitation. To the Christ follower, to the Yahweh worshiper, the instructions concerning the garden, the tree in the midst of the garden, was a guardrail to give Adam and Eve unfettered access to eternal life as well as into the entire multifaceted nature of God's created order. <laughs> to the uninitiated, it's a limitation. To the one who knows the Lord, it's a guardrail. Guardrails are put there to protect, not to keep you from enjoying anything that's good for you. You said it right. Whatever goes down into the well comes up in the bucket. Back to the phone lines we go. Next to the great state of Texas, we'll go to Charlie. Charlie, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Go right ahead. Hey, 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 man, you're right on. Appreciate this show. I, I, I'm going to make this quick. You know, I was reading on it, uh, Facebook the other night where they're going to drop the age. I think it's in Australia. Mm. The uh, age of having have an underage sex, they're going to drop that crime to a misdemeanor mm -hmm. because of having an underage sex with a, with a kid. Now they said that the punishment is way too harsh. Mm -hmm. they not only did they just kill a marriage, they're trying to kill our kids. Yep. It just, it, it, it's just crazy. And they need to come from the pulpit. What you, what you, your show, it needs to come from the pulpit. It's Amen. Char Charlie, I agree with you 100%. And look, to add insult to injury, I'm going to say this. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. We have a current sitting United States Supreme Court justice who in her former role as a chief lawyer at the ACLU, she argued in a paper for the lowering of the age of, sex uh, of legal consent for sexual activity in America. You want to know her name? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know who she want to know who she was nominated and ultimately appointed by? Bill Clinton. You want to know how many Republicans oppose her nomination? Not very many. And I'm saying Republicans because because you don't expect Democrats to oppose a Democrat nominated Supreme Court justice. But certainly. There would be some opposition, right? Back to the phone lines we go <laughs> next to Alabama where Mark is on the line. Mark, thank you for calling. The Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. I have to give you 30 seconds so I get all the callers in. Go right ahead, Mark. Hey, thank you for uh, taking my call. I just want to say that the ironclad law of supply and demand works. Yep. And that very law put Donald Trump into office. If mm -hmm. the people in this country do not shop at Target, do not go to the movies and see that sort of thing mm -hmm. and support that kind of garbage, then they will stop making it. But as long as we as a people do not join together and understand the power of our voice and our dollars, it will continue. You're right. You're absolutely right, Mark. Thank you so much for your call. And listen, peer pressure is not just something that happens on the elementary school playground. Adults succumb to peer pressure, too. There are lots of adults that just go and do things because they want to make sure they are able to be a part of the conversations around the water cooler. Did you see what was on the show last night? Did you see what such and such was wearing? Did you see that award show? I'm saying we have to get to the place where we are comfortable being separate. Back to the phone lines. The great state of Texas, Connie, is on the line. Connie, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. 30 seconds. Go right ahead. Thank you, Abe. Thank you, Abe, for taking my call. I just wanted to say this. Uh, my grandchildren were over over the weekend, and I went to put the TV on uh, to the Disney Channel, mm -hmm. not knowing, you know, what was going on with Disney at this time. And my 9-year-old grandson said, no, Grandma, we cannot watch Disney anymore. They have a show on there, I believe it was called Andy Mack, that's got mm -hmm. two boys liking each other. And my mom, my mom won't let us watch that anymore. And it's a shame that even on Disney, that children of that age, they know better. And, but that's what they're being subject to, what used to be a family-friendly show. You're absolutely right, Connie. Listen, I'm just going to tell you straight up like it is. Disney has, has declared war on the innocence of our children. They've declared war. I'm just telling you like it is. They have made no, they, they, they make no bones about the fact that they're coming for our kids. Now, I'm not trying to compel you to follow my convictions, but you at least need to know the information. We'll go next to, to the phone lines. John is on the line for Virginia. John, 30 seconds. Thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Go right ahead. Um, thank you, Abraham. I really appreciate you talking and shining light on these issues. 
Uh, I just wanted to add that we have the ability now and that we can and we should collaboratively and publicly declare through like online petitions our withdrawal from this kind of media and also along with that the kind of media we promised to support. You're exactly right, John. Thank you for your comments. Listen, the Bible says it better than anything else. If we sow to the flesh, from the flesh, we reap corruption. Conversely, we sow to the spirit, we reap eternal life. The choice is ours, people. What are we going to do about this? Will we continue swallowing the, the smut that they're pouring down our throats, or will we reject it? The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. Faith, Family, Freedom, American Family Radio. We desperately need a spiritual awakening. Situations have deteriorated to the point where the only thing that will save us is for God to step in in revival. Revive Us Again is a powerful new DVD from the AFA Cultural Institute featuring David Butts of Harvest Prayer Ministries. I believe that the only hope for America is revival. Available at afastore.net. Faith, Family, Freedom. American Family Radio, a ministry of the American Family Association.